Welcome to video two of the iPrint migration video uh, training sessions. Uh, we're going to talk about the iPrint client. Uh, first, we're going to talk about how the iPrint client communicates to the print manager and also how it does not communicate to the print manager, which is, is relevant to this discussion. An iPrint printer installed to a workstation communicates to the print manager by whatever address follows the printer name. Here's my Windows XP printers and faxes window. I have a printer installed called printer1 on and then some address. This address is the address to which the print manager is bound. So here's my network server and when I load it, right now my NDPSM is already loaded as you can see right there. But when I did load him I typed NDPSM forward slash DNS name equals and then I typed in the DNS name of the server in this case. Uh, we're going to later find out that that's not a recommended way to do it, but the DNS name of the server is as such. And then I would hit enter and it would load the print manager. I'd actually browse to it in eDirectory and then load the print manager. And which means any printer that gets installed to any uh, workstation will be bound to this name that I have uh, following that slash DNS name equals. By default, if I were to load NDPSM without that DNS name switch, it would bind to the IP address of the server, which is also not recommended, and we'll talk more about why it's not recommended later. So that's how you define or how you configure uh, the address to which these clients will see. Now, a, a lot of people will uh, be preparing a migration and they're not really sure what address they uh, had their NDPSM bind to when the print manager is loading. So you just go into the printers and faxes, view this address here, and then you will know. Additionally, you can go to the IPP page where you install your printers, hover your mouse over one of the install links, and look at the bottom of my page down here at the status portion. Notice it says the IPP IPP printer URL equals IPP colon slash slash and then an address. And here will be either a DNS name or an IP address. In this case, again, it's the DNS name of the server, of the network server. There's another condition that should be understood. Notice printer number two. It doesn't have an address. It just has the word demo, which is a name that I chose. This is called the short install name feature. Um, I can show you how I enabled this. If I go into edit, go to my sys volume, Apache, htdocs, ippdocs, there's an iprint.ini file, and in here, originally it had short install name equals default. Well, I changed that to demo. Uh, you can notice the first printer I installed. I didn't have that set, and that's why it has the full address. The second printer I install, I did have that option set. So it says demo. So you don't know by looking at the name of the printer what address your print manager is bound to or what your clients are communicating to. But if you want to see it from a workstation perspective, you right click, go to properties, go to ports, expand that column out, and you'll see the port is that address uh, which, which we already know. Uh, that printer is pointing to. Now this is very important to understand because after you do the migration, as video one explained, uh, that does not migrate the iPrint client configuration to the new server. Uh, that is something that you, the administrator, is going to have to figure out and I'll show you how to do that uh, in through these uh, video series. Uh, the iPrint client does not communicate to the print manager uh, through eDirectory. Uh, it does not know about the eDirectory context. Uh, again, all it knows is the printer agent name and the address to which the print manager is bound. It doesn't know the it doesn't know the eDirectory context of the printer agent either. It just knows the printer agent name. And, and that's going to be relevant and significant when we start talking about the migration as well. Uh, and, and notice uh, this is actually a a bad setup that I have here because uh, I'll give this outline I call it an undesired iPrint DNS configuration. 
Uh, let me explain this chart a little bit because we'll be referring to it quite a bit throughout these videos. I have two servers. On the left I have my network server. On the right I have my Linux server. Uh, here's the IP address of my network server. And when I loaded NDPSM, as I showed you, I used the DNS name equals the DNS name of the server, which means all of my workstations out there, as we already looked at, have the printer name on IPP colon slash slash the server DNS. Once I do my migration, my workstations are pointing to the DNS name of the network server. Well, that's not the DNS name of my Linux server, so how's that going to work? How am I going to get my workstations to point to the Linux server? And that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, notice it's DNS that resolves uh, the, this name to the IP address of the server. So we just talked about what an undesired print manager client configuration looks like. Now let's look what a desired configuration looks like. Here uh, it shows as if I had bound my print manager to what we call a transferable DNS name, also called an alias DNS name, also called a C name record in DNS. This is a name that you can come up with on your own. Uh, you pick a name that makes sense to you that will follow the print manager. I call it prntmgr.novelldemo.com. And once you do that, uh, if, if you originally had set that up, all your printers would have been installed pointing to this transferable DNS name. And of course, you just set up in DNS and say, this name that I made up, I want it to resolve to the IP address of the NetWare server. Uh, this is a, a desirable configuration because once you do the migration, all you need to do is go into DNS and say, you used to resolve to that 227 address, which was the network server. Well, now, DNS, I want you to resolve that name to the 228 address, which happens to be on a Linux server. And uh, instantly, all of your workstations are redirected to your Linux server after the migration is done. And we'll talk about how to do that uh, and when to do that. Um, but that is why it is desirable to have your print manager bound to a transferable DNS name. Now a lot of you will be saying, well too late. I already have my network uh, configuration established. My workstations are already set up like this. What do I do now? Well there, there is an answer and uh, and it's there's there's a very good way to automate the process of getting your clients to uh, change from this server DNS name to the transferable DNS name and we'll talk more about that in a later video segment I also want to talk about a multi a server iPrint consolidation uh, let's let's look at this here. Let's say we have two network servers, or three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on network servers, all hosting a print manager. All of them bound to some address. Could be we could have loaded it binding to the IP address. We could have bound it to uh, a DNS name of the server or even a transferable DNS name. And all of these workstations are mixed. Some uh, you notice the address some are NWSRVR1, some are NWSRVR2. Well, how do you get these clients to all point to one server? Well, the answer is uh, you don't. <laughs> what you do is you use a feature called the printer agent redirection feature. Let me show you that. It's in iManager. You go to this is the manage print manager. This is on my netware server. And uh, oh, we go to Printer Agent Redirection tab. Thank you. And uh, here we have our five printer agents. And this is the redirect URL. Now, I have not created my Linux printer agent, so I can't really show you quite yet. But um, what you do is you browse in the tree. And I don't have any of my Linux container yet. If you look, notice I don't have any printer agents there. But if I go into my netware side of my tree, I can redirect, uh, for example, any 
printer any workstation that has printer one installed I want you to automatically remove him and automatically install in its place this printer four now this happens to be pointed to the same server which this uh, redirection will work you can point to uh, another printer on the same print manager but that's how you would uh, accomplish this you'd execute the migration you'd have all your Linux objects out there by this uh, similar name it would look more something like this uh, Linux print manager look if that were the name that your Linux print manager were bound to and uh, the printer the netware printer agent would be uninstalled and automatically uh, this Linux printer agent would be installed in its place and it would automate uh, this scenario so that all these workstations would then start pointing to that server and, and if you're consolidating multiple uh, network servers this is the really the only way to do it and, and it's a good way to do it now you can use that printer agent redirection feature in this scenario um, which is fine uh, you create your print manager here uh, you, you have a non-transferable DNS name use printer agent redirection it will automatically uninstall these printers and install in its place a printer that's pointing to this Linux print manager uh, I'm gonna show a yet a different way uh, to do it. I'm going to show how to use, and we've already talked about it, how to use DNS uh, with a transferable DNS name. Uh, and I'll, I'll demonstrate how to do this. Now the advantages of using printer agent redirection, as you saw, you can do a few printers at a time, or you can do all your printers, uh, as far as redirecting your clients to the Linux print manager. Uh, that's one of the advantages. The disadvantage is your what you're asking is for your clients to uninstall the network printer agent and install the Linux printer agent in its place. Now this is a somewhat new environment, this Linux print manager. Uh, do you have all the printer drivers associated? Do you have the printer drivers uploaded to your driver store? Are these automated uninstall and reinstalls really going to work? The answer is yes they should, but it, it's an an un your network environment is tested and true over time where your Linux configuration uh, this is a new setup so you, you're kinda hoping that the migration did succeed uh, that your driver printer driver associations are in place and it and uh, this because if you uninstall if you do this printer agent redirection and it automates the uninstall then it says now I'm going to install the Linux printer uh, agent if it's not configured correctly, if there's not a driver associated or something's wrong with it, no printer will be installed in its place. In essence, your iPrint printers will be removed from your workstations and nothing will be installed in its place. And that can be an undesirable situation. But uh, there are ways to validate whether uh, migration was successful and we'll talk about those methods. So those are your advantages and disadvantages of the printer agent redirection feature and uh, and that um, is we just completed talking about the iPrint client and how it communicates to the print manager and how it is bound to an address that the print manager was used during load time